When it came to the Suns NBA championship run, Cam Johnson was a very pivotal player for that team. He was someone off the bench that could really bring a light to the team and was good at defense and cutting and shooting and he was all around a good player. However, a lot of you might have not known that Cam Johnson, just like Mikel Bridges, had 10 people selected before him in the 2019 NBA draft. Now, I think a lot of people would say that the 2019 draft class was very loaded and there was so much talent, not even just in the top 10 picks, but after that. So in today's video, I want to talk about the people that were selected before Cam Cam Johnson just so you guys can see how deep this draft class was. I don't want to waste your time before I get into the video if you guys could leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new and turn on post notifications we're trying to hit 5,000 subscribers at the end of the year and your support would mean the absolute most to me so thank you so much and let's get into this. The New Orleans Pelicans select Zion Williamson. Now Zion has had a very interesting NBA career as he was hyped up to be this really big prospect that was supposed to be just as big as LeBron. However, due to injuries and weight issues and all that stuff, Zion Williamson's future for the New Orleans Pelicans is not at all good. Now I won't lie, there have been a lot of storylines going on about him that he's like 330 pounds and he's very overweight and that he's just not in good basketball shape. However, some pictures have leaked of him from the past couple weeks apparently he was like taking a picture with a fan and he ended up looking like really skinny now when zion williamson is playing he looks like a really efficient player he can score the ball he has a good field goal percentage he's really good at the inside game last season he did average 27 7 and 3 so i think it's safe to say when zion is on the court he's a really dominant player when zion does return i do expect him to be just as dominant as he was before the memphis grizzlies select Ja Morant. As of right now in this draft class, I think it is safe to say that Ja Morant has been the best player so far. For starters, he did win Rookie of the Year, which did not shock anyone. Also, every single season, he has improved, and this year, he's averaging 27, 6, and 5 on 47% shooting. A lot of people say he is due for Most Improved Player of the Year, which I definitely think is valid. Also, the Grizzlies are the four seed right now in the Western Conference, so it definitely does show that Ja Morant has played a very big part in that. The New York Knicks select... RJ Barrett. RJ Barrett was a part of one of the more popular Duke teams to ever exist that had a lot of future NBA players. And so far, RJ Barrett has had a pretty decent career. I mean, I would definitely say he's a key part of the New York Knicks right now because they are having some success. I definitely do think within these next couple years, RJ Barrett will take a step forward and become the best player on the New York Knicks. The man is averaging 15 and 5 on 40% shooting and shooting 35% from the three. But I think it's definitely safe to say that RJ Barrett isn't exactly what he wanted to live up to just yet, but I think within these next couple years, he's going to make that step. The Los Angeles Lakers select DeAndre Hunter. So originally he was selected by the Lakers. However, he was traded to the Pelicans for Anthony Davis. Then he was traded to the Atlanta Hawks. Now DeAndre Hunter wasn't such a bad pick. He did average 12 and 5 in his rookie year. Now it was in his second season where we really started to see some development as his numbers started to go up a little bit, averaging 15 and 5. However, this season has been a little bit of a blur as he's only averaging 10 points right now because he is out with some injury. He's going to be out for I think a couple other months. So we're really going to have to wait to see some more DeAndre Hunter. I do want to see more development from him before. I can call him a bust or I can call him a really good pick, but I don't think he's going to be a bust. I'm really hoping that he turns out to be a stud for the Hawks. The Cleveland Cavaliers select... Darius Garland. Now I won't lie, I was really skeptical about the Cavs taking Darius Garland because I just didn't think it was a good pick. I mean mainly because he only did play 5 games in college, but even in those 5 games, he did really well, averaging 16, 3, and 2. However, I think we can all admit that this was a really good pick for the Cleveland Cavaliers and ever since his rookie year, and this is something I really don't notice with these rookies, he's developed every single season. Every year he's gotten better statistically and you can just tell in his play. Now for the first time since the LeBron James era, the Cleveland Cavaliers Cavaliers do have a chance to make the playoffs, which would not shock me because this is a pretty well-balanced team and Darius Garland is definitely a very big part in that. Earlier on in the video, I did talk about how John Morant should win most improved player of the year, but if something were to happen where he could not win the award or maybe he gets injured even longer, I would definitely give it to Darius Garland. The man is averaging 19 and 7 on 47% shooting, so you tell me if you think he deserves it. But if you think Darius Garland is the only one good at handling balls, hey y'all, this video is sponsored by Manscaped.com, the global brand for men's grooming and hygiene products. If you guys want to take care your body why wait to the beginning of the year when you can start right now with manscapes brand new performance package 4.0 now personally i like to do my grooming in the shower so that's why i use the lawnmower 4.0 which is actually waterproof and is very much skin safe not to mention it is cordless so it's not going to be a struggle to use also it has this little led light which does help you while you're in the shower not to mention it also shows how much battery you do have left so you can put it on your little charger stand now right after you get out of the shower you're going to want to use their crop reserver anti-chafing ball deodorant now my personal favorite product is very simple is the crop reviver ball toner it is super fast 
fast to use and not to mention sometimes I'm in a hurry I just do a quick little spray and I'm good for the day. On top of that as an additional gift you do get their weed whacker nose hair trimmer. In addition you do get their boxer shorts which are super comfortable and so you can keep all your stuff in one place you get their shed travel bag. And don't worry I got a good deal for you guys. If you guys do use code specs you'll get 20% off your order and international free shipping. Guys that's code specs 20% off the link is in the description below. Thank you to Manscaped for sponsoring this video. The Phoenix Sun select Jared Culver. Now, most of you guys probably do know that Jared Culver did not end up playing for the Phoenix Suns, but he was traded to the T-Wolves right after this. Now, Jared Culver's rookie year was interesting. The man did average like 9 points, and he did start in like 35 games, averaged about 24 minutes. And I'm not gonna lie, when I saw the Suns drafted him, I was a little excited. I saw him play at Texas Tech. He did really good, but thank God the Suns did trade him because this would have been another one of their draft busts that I don't even want to talk about. The following season, he would average 5 points per game, and his role would decrease heavily and then this season currently he's played in like nine games oh and he got traded to memphis this season i do hope that he can go to a team where he really can develop and become a better player because i did like jared culver in college i don't want to see him become a bust but from the looks of it i wouldn't be shocked in about three years he's gone from the nba the chicago bulls select kobe white now, i think kobe white was a really good pick for the chicago bulls and to be honest in his first two seasons he did really well however this season he has not played in that many games so i'm not gonna fault him he's had some injuries he tested positive for Rona. However, last season when he was playing, the man was averaging 15-4 on 40% shooting. And not to mention, he's a really good player for the Chicago Bulls off the bench. Obviously, he's not starting because of guys like Lonzo Ball and Alex Caruso, but he is going to be a really good player for the Chicago Bulls when it comes to a bench player. I love to watch Kobe White play when he is healthy, so I definitely cannot wait to see what the Bulls have planned for him. Atlanta Hawks select Jackson Hayes. Jackson Hayes was traded to the Pelicans, so he never did actually suit up for the Hawks. And I gotta say, his three years with the Pelicans so far have been very, nah, not that good. I mean, he has consistently averaged 7-4, and four, and his playing time is having him as a rotation player, so I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. However, he has been moved to the G League this season, which does make sense because he rarely got any playing time. The Washington Wizards select... Rui Hachimura. Now, Rui Hachimura has been a very interesting case for the Washington Wizards. His first couple seasons, he has averaged 13 and 6, and he's been a very pivotal player for the Washington Wizards, but this season, he has not played a single game yet. Now, from everything I can find, it says he's been missing time due to personal reasons, so it's not like an injury or something, so he can return whenever he wants, but I don't know when he's going to return. Washington's trying to make a run to the playoffs, so I definitely do believe that Rui Hachimura is going to be a very key part of that. The Atlanta Hawks select... Cam Reddish. Now, Cam Reddish has consistently averaged around 11-4 on 38% shooting. And I will say he's been a very consistent player for the Atlanta Hawks. And in the NBA playoffs, when the Hawks did need him most, he only did play a couple games, but he did average 12 points in those four games. I like Cam Reddish. I think he has the potential to be really good for the Atlanta Hawks. And in a couple seasons, I think he will overtake as one of the best players aside from Trey Young. If he was to leave or get traded, I could see Cameron Reddish being a good starter on a solid team or maybe even a championship team. But for now, we're just gonna have to wait and see about Cameron Reddish. The Minnesota Timberwolves select Cameron Johnson. And finally, we get to Cam Johnson, who has been a very key part for the Phoenix Suns in their championship run. Obviously, we do know that Jared Culver and Cam Johnson were traded for each other, which is just like, wow. I mean, we could see how differently these two players have been. Now, Cam Johnson's not a superstar or anything, but he's definitely one of the NBA's best role players. Right now, he's averaging around nine points per game and about three to four rebounds. However, the man is superior when it comes to cutting and being able to be a spot-up shooter. Oh, and I mean, I guess you could say he's okay at driving. In the paint. And Johnson throw, he throws it down. Now, I do think Jay Crowder will be leaving the Suns in a couple years, and when Cam Johnson does take his spot, there's no doubt in my mind, this man is going to be one of the best power forwards in the league. Of course, if you guys did enjoy this video, make sure you do leave a like on it, and subscribe to the channel if you're new, turn on post notifications. I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Peace.